Hello everyone and welcome back to more of the Fruit of Grisai. In the last episode we uh, got to explore all of Amane's holes. Um, yeah. Had some eight chains, couldn't show them unfortunately. Now, summer vacation looms upon us. And Sakaki is here being just a grumpy princess. Trying, she basically just wants to ruin everyone's fun. Hmm, huh, too over the top to tolerate, but too close to the truth to brush aside. An excellent piece of agitation to produce such marked irritation in a pathetic modern youth. You might have a feature in PsyOps. Alright, my bad. Makina, listen up. Sakaki has the right to her own opinion on summer vacation. Her perspective on the world is just as valid as yours. For example, change isn't always a good thing. Ah, exactly. Sometimes things, you know, they progress, but they're actually worse than the previous thing. I don't know what those R32, R33 is, but... Exactly, talk is cheap. Anyone can talk a big game, but to step up to the plate, that's a whole nother matter. Are we gonna find out what that is? Oh, pan. Pan is bread in Japanese. I know that. I'm smart. <laughs> Alright, isn't Sack Sack that bread made with starch from the sago palm tree? He made Belgian waffles and you didn't invite me? <gasps> Sachi, you fiend! Okay. Anata, Papua New Guinea Nikolote de Moharun. Is this a realistic fear? Girls found herself some motivation. No need to be a wet blanket. It's better than idling away the time without any objective whatsoever, wouldn't you say? Well, good, we agree. Exactly, a good culinary skill is to be respected, not, you know, shunned. Baking bread's kind of pain. パンは In that case, Mark, and how about getting a part-time job at a bakery? Oh, deja vu much? え、ちょっとちょっと。だって、マキナよ。アルバイトなんてできるの? opinion on the matter seems clear. Tell me, do you agree that it's hopelessly beyond your capabilities? That's the spirit. Nicely said. So much better if she does. If you don't know how to learn from your failures, you'll never succeed. Once a kid's out of elementary school, you need to stop holding their hand all the time or they'll never grow up. Let them run around and trip and skin their knees. That's how they learn to pick themselves up off the ground. Who's being smug? Life lesson for you. Uh, the rain has graced my plane once again. I like that. That is funny. I like that euphemism. If you get moist this easily, you're gonna end up with mildew down there. <laughs> 
Anyway, Machina, having an objective is a laudable thing. Devote yourself to your baking this summer, then fly off to Leyte or Luzon as your whims direct you. I assume they're in Papua New Guinea. You know, there's a Papua New Guinea, but there's no Mama New Guinea. I wonder why that is. And so with Makina's borderline nonsensical explosion of enthusiasm, our summer vacation began. Having a goal in life is a truly admirable thing, just as I pompously inform Makina. But it's not like I've got any well-defined objective of my own. It's been that way for a long time, really. I float through my days without any clear objective, direction. Staying alive for a lack of a better alternative, every once in a while someone remembers I exist and shoves a job on me. I thought I came to this school in order to change that aimless way of life. Not that I had any idea what sort of change I wanted. I didn't come in with any overblown expectations. Just a vague anticipation of something new. Is that too much to ask? But as it turned out, what changed wasn't so much my purposeless routine. It was the way I viewed the scenery floating past. In other words, my way of thinking itself has changed. Never saw that one coming. Hi! Oh, lunch! What's on the menu for today? I just said that. You're a broken record. Ooh, clam chowder! I'm starving. Sushi with rice on clam chowder. The menu's never exactly coherent, but you're taking things to a whole new level of weird. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very sweet of you. Combination of a very Japanese seafood dish and a very Western soup. It's the culinary equivalent of wearing a kimono with combat boots, but mysteriously, when I actually gave it a try, the tastes don't particularly clash. Most likely, Imani's diligent efforts weren't directed solely towards the nutritional front. I'm sure she adjusted the flavor of the two dishes to complement each other. The sushi is lightly seasoned with shiitake mushrooms and other vegetables, all boiled to a pleasant firmness. The chowder is just salty enough, it's scent reminiscent of the sea. A surprising combo, yes, but the taste is soothing. I agree. Her mother must have raised her well. Marry a woman like this and you'll never come to regret it. Makina, my friend, I encourage you to learn from her example. Oh, don't be so modest. Hardly anything to complain about. It gives that homemade cooking feel, right? It's like something a mother would make. For me, maternal cooking is associated with memories of canned food, but Amane's meals always make me think of the idolized perfect mother I pictured as a child. The food's comforting somehow. If you have the money to spend, you can get as much exotic gourmet food as you want. But a meal that conveys this sort of simple, earnest warmth is far harder to come by. しないご飯よりは全然美味しいし、感謝もしてるのよ。でも若い子は油っこくって味の濃いものが食べたいものなのよさ。そんなこと言って、あんた私に隠れて結構食べてるじゃないのよ。この間もリップグロス塗ったみ
ちうるさい母親モードに突入して風向きが怪しくなってきたのよさ<笑> what? What? Is that me? That's probably me. What is that? The grating pattern of electronic beeps seem to be emerging from the egg shaped digital pet dangling at Makina's waist. Oh, that's Makina. Oh. I thought her Tamagashi had died or something. <laughs> oh, that child, whatever are we going to do with her, Mane? Well, she did finish everything on her plate before she ran off. No big deal. <sighs> Why, you don't think the girl can handle herself? I understand how you feel, but the girl's jumping into something of her own initiative. That's a good thing, don't you think? I mean, all you have to do is take a step back and watch over her affectionately. This is a good example of a trap question. How can I be in the way she is? It, it'd be stranger if you weren't at least a little concerned, but unless you show some faith at times, it'll undercut her self esteem and give her an excuse not to try. Mm, well said, me. It'll be alright. Makin is much more clever than she looks. She'll do well. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, we kind of do, don't we? They are. Definitely not wrong about that. Normal. Right. Normality. I hadn't been looking for some dramatic change from the start. I wanted to find my way to exactly the sort of peaceful, commonplace existence. But the ability to appreciate such things is mostly reserved for the elderly. The exception would be those who have been made to realize the value of a normal existence early on by exposure to something worse. Amane? Are you? Hmm? No, it's not them. <laughs> Come to think of it, the word normal is about as vague as it gets. Normal, typical, average. These are relative points of reference, entirely dependent on your environment. You don't have to kill anyone. No one tries to kill you. No one screams in your ear in the middle of the night. You don't. You won't see a corpse rotting inside a train carriage. A moment of pleasure doesn't drag you down into self-loathing and guilt. A moment of misery doesn't lead you to curl up into a ball and weep for forgiveness. Is that what most of us mean when we say the word normal? The absence of such things? Probably so. But there are people who've lived with such abnormalities as their normal. Living normally is far more difficult than it sounds. It's only possible when you found yourself a suitable environment. Someone, someplace, something that enables you to live in peace. I probably came to the school in an attempt to find what I was missing. And now that I think about it, the thing I needed... Might have well been a woman like you, Amane. Huh? <laughs> Nothing much, just admiring your knockers, impressive as always. I'll save that for later. For the moment, I'm going to wash my hair. Alright then, if you would. Okay. Okay. By now, I've gotten pretty accustomed to Mani's relentless attempts to take care of my every need, as if I were some helpless invalid. She must have grown up watching her mother devotedly serve her father, eventually internalizing the idea that waiting on men hand and foot was a normal woman's role. That was my original guess at least. But when I actually asked her, it seemed the truth was quite the opposite. If anything, her father was the busybody of the family. I got my looks from my mom, my personality from my dad. Hi, will you cook it? Alrighty, hot water time. In the next episode.